Three WMS Saber Montclair. My name's Aiden Ivers. This is the Tuesday morning buzz. I'm really excited. We got a great show coming up. I am joined by my co-host Jake Getz on Zoom. Jake, how are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. A little sleepy. Can't hear Jake. I'm sorry. But it do be the morning buzz. So <laughs> it's all about. Oh my gosh. These guys. Okay, well, Jake, we're trying to we'll try to get your audio as soon as possible. We are joined by our sportscaster, George Kalasiak. George, how are you? I'm doing great, Aiden. How are you? Great. I'm great love to see you again. Love that. Great to see you always. Yeah. Always, man. And we are also joined by our segment host, Emily McCormack. Hi. How are you doing, Emily? I'm I'm doing good. I'm I'm happy to deliver the the tunes of the Tuesday. But later. later. Yeah. And Making her WMAC debut. Is that right? Yes. WMAC debut, <laughs> Julia Slavin. So close, close. Slevin. <laughs> Julia Slevin, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm super excited to be here. Awesome. Awesome. We're we're glad to have you here, Julia. Thank you. <laughs> and if you could, can you please tell us what is going on? in the world of news today with the news guys wow. absolutely so as of january 30th the memphis fire department has now fired two emts and a lieutenant from the tyree nichols case the department says that they violated numerous policies and protocol when they were called to the scene on january 7th after the attack the memphis the memphis police also confirmed that seven officers from the scene have been relieved of duty including five who have been charged with the death of the young 29 year old Protesters are taking the streets to demand justice for this absolutely tragic loss. Moving on um, for national story, we have Cindy Williams, a famous actress, died at 75 years old. Williams was most known for her performance as Shirley in the popular sitcom Laverne and Shirley, as well as her performance in notable films such as American Graffiti and The Conversation. Her family says that she passed peacefully after an illness in Los Angeles, California. International story, a suicide bomber detonated explosives inside a mosque in northwestern Pakistan on Monday, killing and wound, wounding dozen of worshipers. More than 150 people were, play, were praying when the suicide bomber struck. At least 59 people were killed and more than 157 others were injured. Among those numbers, at least 30, 33 police officers. Now moving on to no, local news. A skull found in Pennsylvania is identified as a missing New Jersey man from 1984. Richard Thomas Alt was 31 and last seen on Christmas Day when him and his girlfriend went missing. Her body was discovered, but he would be missing for years to come. A fisherman found a human skull in Delaware River in Trent, New Jersey, and through DNA testing and the help of his daughter, they discovered this, that the skull actually belonged to Mr. Holt. Hopefully, with advances in science and technology, researchers can crack these cold cases and give families lots more closure. And moving into weather, when you wake up today, you will see some light snow and some rain. It's supposed to be a high of 44 and a low of 22 with, with some sunshine during the afternoon. Later at night, the temperature will drop, so please remember your jacket. I'm Julia Slevin, and back to you, Aiden. Thank you, Julia. And a story about the Pennsylvania man. That's sounds something directly out of a nonfiction book right that's what i said when i read it i was like there's no way it took 37 years for him to be found at least yeah it's definitely one of those new stories that you know stick with you mm -hmm. about how, how could that how could that uh, be you know and just really quickly george before getting to your sports guy jake can you hear us i can hear you fine Okay, all right, all right. We're trying to get his. Uh, we'll get Jake. We'll get Jake he here hear, eventually. No, no, he can. He can hear us, but fortunately, we cannot yeah. hear what he's saying to us through Zoom. We're trying to get that as fixed as soon as possible. But George, in the meantime, while we're doing that, can you please give us what's going on in the world of sports? Of course, Aiden. I would love to let you know what's going on in the world of sports. All right, the big game is finally here as the Philadelphia Eagles and Kansas City Chiefs. We'll face off on Sunday, February 12th in Arizona with the championship on the line. In NFL news, the Los Angeles Chargers have hired former Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator Kellen Moore to be their next offensive coordinator. In NBA, the Brooklyn Nets defeated the Los Angeles Lakers 121-104 to 
Nets improved 31 and 19 on the season, while the Lakers fall to 23 and 28. NHL and NHL news Chicago Blackhawks legend Bobby Hull passed away at the age of 82. The Hall of Famer spent 15 seasons with the Blackhawks and won two league MVPs. Rest in peace to Bobby Hall. And more NHL news the New York Islanders have acquired Bo Horvat from the Vancouver Canucks. The Islanders are giving up multiple players and a conditional first round pick for Horvat. This has been George Calcio with your WMSC Sports Cast. Thank you very, very much, George. You're very welcome. Based on that information, big game. Big game. It's going to be pretty exciting. I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. Yeah. I, you know, every year I'm so, excited. So, something that my dad and I really uh, hold close to us when this time comes mm-hmm. around. The, the best thing about a big game is that two weeks later, pitchers and catchers report to spring training. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Baseball, <laughs> baseball season. We'll be giving MLB news updates yeah, well, eventually. In a few weeks. In a, <laughs> in a few, few weeks. weeks. We'll, we'll get there. That. But now it's football season. And it is. Right now in. WMSC, it is new season. We're gonna get into some new new stories for uh, for the week, right? So our first story relates to the tragic event that occurred last week in Memphis, Tennessee, regarding the death of Tyree Nichols. As according to NBCNews.com, three EMTs who responded to the fatal beating of Tyree Nichols were fired after an internal investigation. Robert Long, Jermichael Sidridge, and Lieutenant Michelle Whittaker were found to have violated multiple department policies and protocols in their patient response to Nicholas on January 7th. So, I mean, we, if you, uh, if any of us turn, tuned into, you know, news, cables cable store at uh, cable stations during the last week we would they would you would probably seen that, that video of uh tyree nichols you know being handled by the uh by the police officers right and it's very uh it's very disturbing i think right and we were hearing a lot of stories about this right and um there were some national wide uh, protests going on and you know, it's, I think based off of, you know, that public outcry of this event, um, it's great that the people of, of Memphis, Tennessee are really saying, okay, this is the work that we got to do. This happened. It's unfortunate, but uh, we got to make some changes here because we got to make sure that these types of tragedies don't keep on happening because, yes, it's tra- it's, it is really tragic, but, um, I, you know, I, I I personally think the best thing to do is to recognize it, recognize this happened. Yes, it's bad. We can protest. But I think we can also try to make the best changes to the future to make sure it doesn't happen again, right? Yeah. Definitely. And we yes, to, and can I be... Audio back here. Really, Anything? Really trying here, guys. Please bear with us. Nope. Okay. Move on. Jake, we hear you. We can see your lips moving. We just can't hear what you're saying. Keep going, Jake. Keep keep talking. Keep talking. Hey y'all. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, okay. Uh, just report that story. I'm all trying something else. Okay. Um. Well, as we are trying to get Jake's audio to hear us, Jake, it's not our fault. We we're really desperately trying to hear you. <laughs> we are. We're going to move in to the next story according to the new york times doctors are now a major barrier to paxlovid 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 sorry paxlovid covid is still linked to hundreds of deaths a day in the u.s and we have treatment that could bring down those deaths a prescribed pill called paxlovid which reduces the severity of a COVID infection, particularly among older and more vulnerable Americans, if that treatment remains underused. According to White House data, doctors prescribed it in about 45% of recorded COVID cases nationwide during the first two weeks of January. Why is Paxlovid still relatively untapped? Part of the answer lies in a lack of public awareness 
some COVID patients also may decide that they don't need Paxlovid because they are already vaccinated and have had COVID before or are younger. The political polarization of the virus plays a role too. People in blue states are more likely to use Paxlovid than people living in red states. I'll be honest, I have never really heard of this new uh, new treatment or new drug since now. <laughs> I guess I'm in the, the category of people who, who just haven't um, really heard about it at all, right? George, yeah. have you, have you heard of this? I've never heard of this before <laughs> in my life, you know, but it seems to be effective. Yeah. You know, if, if they yeah. say that it's a treatment, you know, I think this is, you know, something to look more into. Yeah, I mean, um, it definitely sounds, it definitely sounds like, uh, based on what we just heard, it's meant for a specific group of people. So I don't mm -hmm. imagine us needing the, or requiring to have this, this treatment or drug um, if we have COVID, because we're all really pretty young and we have really good immune systems, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's good that people like have access to this if they need it, you know, because uh, based on what we just read, um, you know, some people might have gotten vaccinated before and and they might have uh, had, it, uh, what was the word? Antibodies? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Thank you, George. You're welcome. Yeah, those. <laughs> um, they might have had those things before. So again, it might be another reason to not. I have it, antibodies but, um, sometimes. You know, Jake. I, I I wish we could. I wish we can <laughs> use your great insight on this topic. Oh, well. But yeah, um, in, in general, I. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, Jake. Wait, like, wow. I can't, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. You <laughs> see your lips moving. So yeah. But uh, yeah, okay. Got, uh, listeners, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break right now to try and get Jake's audio with us. We need, we need, we need, we need, we need Jake. It's not the morning buzz isn't it. The morning buzz isn't it without Jake. So uh, we're gonna take a quick break and please stay tuned while we have these technical difficulties. Try to deal with them. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hey there. Cool. Anything? Oh, what's up? Okay, Jake. So here's the plan in my, I think. I'm thinking we could call you on Discord or something because we can't use the audio from the Zoom meeting because it'll have an echo. Yeah. 
So I was thinking we could call you on Discord and we could hook you up through the aux. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I have mine, don't worry about it. I'm oh, just gonna say. All right, we'll so I'm gonna start a Discord call and we'll see if it works. All right. Cool. Where Gosh. are you? I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> Ugh. Oh, I have to friend request you. Oh my gosh. Oh my not God. Jake Damn, yet. we're not friends. Wow. <laughs> we will be. <laughs> I feel like this is a bad time. <laughs> I feel like this is probably going to Facebook, so say hi to Facebook. Hey, Facebook. <laughs> this is the voice that is working pretty hard to. Uh... Friends with everyone on the management team at some point. Okay. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Just remove did you accept me? <laughs> um, I'm actually trying to open up Discord on my okay, part on my laptop. Yeah. Yeah, because it's still. I think it's still going to Facebook. Okay. Yeah, which is kind of wild. It's still going. Still going. All right. Friends Yay! We're friends. Yo, in our next story, Jake and Laura are friends. <laughs> I don't Jake's see why not. Yeah. Um. All right, so I'm gonna call you, and we'll see yeah. if it works. Yeah. So he'll yes. Indeed. Right. Okay. You yeah. say the same exact thing when you say. I can hear you. Can you hear me? What's up? What's up? Um, just a small town girl. Okay, cool. Weird. Nice. Weird.
Yes, indeed. Um, oh, no. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Um,
for you need both hands. his show, Howdy Rowdy, on Tuesdays. But right now, we're in the morning buzz. And I am joined, my name's Aiden Ivers, I'm joined by Jake Getz. How are you, Jake? I'm doing well, how are you? Oh, no, 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 no. no. All right, can you Not repeat that, Jake? Can you repeat that? <laughs> I'm doing very well. Uh, there he is. That's great. That's great. And we are also joined by our sports guy, Sir George Colasia. How are you, George? I'm good, Aiden. How are you? I'm great. I'm You're great. Good. We also joined by our segment host, Emily McCormack. Hi. How are you doing, Emily? All good. Thank you. Yeah. Good. I'm excited for tunes. Yeah. And we <laughs> are joined by our newscaster, Julia. Levin. Levin. <laughs> All right. Julia's Levin. I'm not going to make a second. Like, right. okay. How are you doing, Julia? How how are you enjoying the feel of the morning bus so far? Like actually being a part of it. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think this is so fun and I can't wait to see more of it. Yeah, like like I said, thank you for you know showing up, making an effort to provide us with the news, you know. Thank you. Uh, Happy to do it. And speaking of news, we have some more stories to share with you listeners. And it relates to us here on campus. It's not it's not an uh, international or a national story. So according to our very own newspaper, the Montclairian, Montclair State University strongly urges its community to wear masks this semester. Montclair State Community's Community Health Advisory Team sent an email to students, staff, and faculty on January 13th, highly recommending the use of masks for the upcoming semester to keep the community safe. According to the Montclairian, although it although wearing a mask is still optional, chat suggests wearing a mask will until transmission rates of COVID nineteen subside. Who's texting right now? Mm-hmm. Who is texting during the morning bus? Especially in high populated areas such as classrooms and meeting outdoors when possible. Andrew Meese, university spokesperson, explains the university is monitoring the pandemic at the same as when it was first started. Me said, quote, as we have done since the beginning of the pandemic, our group of on-campus experts and university administration monitors and assesses the situation. Our campus health advisory team offered this recommendation because respiratory illnesses such as COVID-19 or the flu typically increase during the winter months. So in an abundance of caution, we want to remind the campus community to take some precautions as we return for the spring semester. So let me ask you guys in the room right now, and Jake as well, on Zoom. Have any of your teachers uh, brought that up in your classes uh, regarding mask wearing at all? No. I, <laughs> I have one professor who wears a mask mm-hmm. and hasn't really addressed it. Mm-hmm. And I actually sat near like the front of the room yesterday and I kept thinking like, oh, should I be wearing one? I don't really know, but it's it hasn't really been addressed in any of yeah. my classes, at least. I mean, none of my professors have said anything about it either. Mm-hmm. I'm sure some professors like put it on the syllabus. Yeah, I've, I've heard of some professors yeah. saying the the math policy on the syllabus too. Mm-hmm. So, but mm-hmm. my professors, I haven't heard anything from them okay. regarding that. Julia, what about you? Same um, goes here. Absolutely, no, nobody has actually has said anything about mm-hmm. it. I didn't really even know this happened. Yeah. Actually, okay. And- Jake, as your last semester gets into gear, has have you heard anything about this regarding your teachers? Yeah, no, 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 one's, no really one's really said anything at this point. Like, it's just um, like, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's... yeah. All I've heard is just um, like I've seen teachers wear them, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. I mean, it um. The one thing I remember like last last semester is when they made that switch from saying masks are required to masks are optional, right? And last semester, actually, in one of my classes, my teacher really made it like she, she really wanted there to be a presence of mask wearing just, you know, keep us safe. And it wasn't it wasn't bad doing it. Right. But like me as well, not, like I have already said, not. Not all my professors did that. They didn't really either didn't wear one or didn't say anything about it at all. And I personally think it's it was a good thing that they switched it from saying, okay, everybody has to wear masks like always to you know it so we can make our best choices about it because uh, 
I think as young adults, we can we can think to ourselves, you know, I it's not very possible for me to go home right now, depending on how far I live. So yeah. So I think by wearing this mask, I'm gonna keep myself and people around me safe. Like in the sense that they're probably the chances of them getting sick, not with COVID, but just with with anything going around. Is it like, nowadays there's a bunch of different things going around. So um, just as a way to to ease that, you know, to say bring that rate down, I think is really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So and like I said, like I said, George, yes, I'm taking a public health course right now. In my syllabus, it says it's not required, but right, you know, if you want to wear one keep your community safe you can do so yeah so story kind of makes me like second guess you know if i if i really should be wearing one because like you said it's all about keeping people safe yeah yeah. and especially even though it's been three years now since it started Mm -hmm. it's still around it's not going it's not Mm -hmm. it's not going anywhere so yeah it's not going anywhere for a long time so yeah but one of the reasons why another reason why i think it's good that they made it optional is because uh, and the people in the rec center, if they go there, oh yeah, quick work building out. building manager at the rec center. So yeah, people I, people were complaining about that all the time with yeah. uh, moving with the around, mask. yeah, like having like weight on their shoulders, moving around, mm. doing a lot of aerobic stuff, and having to have that thing on, having that mask on, is definitely I think a lot, like I said, which a lot of very uh, yeah stressful for them. So mm-hmm. in that sense, again, that's good that people have that that option to. So in in terms of like the the rec center mm-hmm. held, uh, handling this at Montclair, it is optional yeah. still. Uh, I don't think we are going to change it being optional because I know a lot of people who are, if it goes back to mandatory, are going to be really upset. You're gonna be You're gonna be mad. <laughs> They're going to be very mad. So we're just keeping it yeah. optional at the rec center as well. But I've since, uh, since mass became optional at the rec center, I rarely see anybody mm-hmm. wearing a mask. And, it, and that relates to the first story we spoke about, one of them, how, like, the Biden administration is going to, in May, they're going to do away with all these emergency stuff because mm-hmm. we're just not in that space anymore. Right. Yes, it's still here. Yes, we should try to keep our community safe as much as possible, but it's not to the same degree as worldwide pandemic. Yeah, you know, for sure. But, but not speaking of worldwide pandemics, <laughs> we've got some... Tunes news. Yeah. Tunes. What's going on in the world of Tunes on Tuesday today? No mask required for Tunes on Tuesday. <laughs> it's pre-recorded. <laughs> it's pre-recorded. Totally safe. Uh, if you don't know, Tunes on Tuesday is our weekly new music show here, curated by the music team at WMSC. This week's interview is with Eric Johnson, interviewed by WMSC member Anthony Soto. Eric Johnson talks about his journey of making music, playing piano and guitar throughout his entire life, and speaks as an artist who began music making music in the 80s. Johnson talks upon the difference between making music back then versus the streaming universe of music nowadays. He talks about his 2022 double album where he brought some old hidden tracks to life alongside some new songs. Johnson touches on having musical vision and how he uses similar textures and tones to keep his trademark sounds throughout his discography. Johnson talks about welcoming criticism when it comes to developing his music, as well as working with record labels and improving his work in any way possible, whether it be during touring or studio sessions. He speaks on some of his musical influences, including some classical music, and talks about artists he's been listening to, taking inspiration from recently. Music from Eric Johnson and more on Tunes on Tuesday, which airs at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. this semester. You can listen in for new music and good vibes. And if you've been missing Tunes episodes recently, what are you doing? (laughs) But if you would like to catch those, those are available on our website, wmseradio.com. And so, Anthony, I love it when Anthony. I love Anthony, Anthony Soto. Absolutely love listening to this interview. And um, I'm gonna take a quick sip of water. <laughs> sip of water done. It just had to happen. Yeah, well, uh... What? Talk to Jake. Hi, Jake. Jake, Hi. what are your thoughts? <laughs> I can hear Jake. My thoughts. My thoughts. I think that sounds <laughs> incredible. Um, <Right? laughs> yeah, I know. I know that. Um... Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to yeah, hear no, Jake's I know that voice. Anthony himself is a is an excellent musician, and I'd be very curious to hear him 
you know, conduct an interview with a musician, see, you know, how that insight kind of informs that conversation. Well, I appreciate that feedback. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I will say I definitely enjoyed listening to this interview and I can't wait for everyone to hear it again. The first time that will air is today at 10 a.m. And Ooh. so I'm going to also deliver some uh, news about the top songs in the adult alternative album chart, according to iHeartRadio. And uh, so if you guys don't know this part of the segment, I will be updating the songs on the top 10 of the AAA chart and also giving some news on what's moved up, what's moved down and some debuts of the week. So to begin at number 10, a debut this week, like I, I just said, we have some of those. At number 10 is Sex, Drugs, Etc. by Beach Weather. Their album Pineapple Sunrise will be here in March. Very excited. It's a debut album. Number nine, Evergreen by Omar Apollo, up one since last week's debut. Number eight, Snap. Whoa, I wrote that wrong. Snap by Rosalind, down four from last week. Number seven, This Is Why by Paramore, down one. Their album of the same name will be here February 10th. Number six in the same position is Stick Season by Noah Kahan. Number five is our second debut of the week is Pages by White Reaper. Number four, down three for the first time since December 6th is Tonight by Phoenix. Dethroned by what? You'll find it very soon. <laughs> Number three, I'm in love with you by the 1975. Same position since last week. Number two, up three since last week's debut, Off My Mind by Joe P. And before I get into number one, quick moment of silence for the songs that we are missing this week. Burning by the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. And These Are the Days by Inhaler. Great moment of silence. So number one <laughs> this week is Runaway to Mars by Talk. Very excited. I wrote up one yas because I absolutely love this song. I'm so excited that Talk is number one. And recently it was announced that Talk will be going on tour with iconic alternative bands Young the Giant and Milky Chance this spring. They'll be making some stops in New York City and Asbury Park. And uh, I hope to be attending. Um, and that is, those are the top 10 in the Triple A chart this week. Yeah. And and uh, you mentioned, oh, were you going to say something? I was just going to say, I want to listen to all these songs because I never heard any of these songs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, iHeartRadio top 10, I'm in. Yeah. I'm all in on that. And uh, if anyone is interested in hearing the top nine in the rock alternative charts, you could totally tune in to Nine of the Times at 9 a.m. right after the morning buzz. And uh, there's some shakeup this week and a uh, kind of similar wow. list, but different enough, you know? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, speaking about, you mentioned, February tenth is the day is the day that Paramore's new album comes out. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of great bands release albums on that day as yes. well. We're seeing new Pierce the Veil. Mm -hmm. We're seeing. Let's go. <laughs> we're seeing. I think new Corn. Oh really? Yeah, they just released a new album in twenty twenty two around this time actually. Yeah, I think this is like either a deluxe or remix version of their most recent one. Oh, that's epic. Yeah, we got a new. Delane coming out. Delane is a symphonic metal band. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I am so excited for Delane. Epic. Yeah. Do you know what the name of Korn's album is? Requiem Mass. Oh, Requiem. I thought it was going to be a big lump with Requiem knobs, for the Mass. But... I think. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, no, that's awesome. Imagine if the title was called "A Big Lump with Noms." You know, <laughs> from Korn. But, but the day before that, as well, really quickly, we're seeing. I think the debut album. Really interesting artist. Mm -hmm. Can you guess who? I don't know. Rebecca I don't know. Rebecca Black. Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> wait, debut album? I think so, yeah. Oh, goodness. She's, uh, was, that awesome. the, was that the girl who sang Friday? That She's releasing she a She's new cool. album. Yeah, she really is. Cool. Let Her Burn. Oh, it's awesome. Let Her Burn. I'm. There's uh, a lot of good music that's going to yeah, come out in the in the next, like, few. Got a couple few. of weeks. Yeah, I know. Um, Not quite February, but I know Beach Weather debut album. Uh, there, this song actually came out. Sex drugs, etc., came out in 2016, mm -hmm. and uh, it's doing amazing on the charts right now. So I'm looking forward to that. I know Gorillas comes out sometime yeah, this month. I think, I think the, the 23rd ish. And um, sometime in March, I think, right? Uh, I, February. I don't, know. I don't know. End of February, beginning of March. Yeah. But uh, either way, you know, not to plug my show again, but I'm playing <laughs> the new Pierce the Veil and the new Gorillas. <laughs> So uh, if you're if you're just chilling after the yeah, buzz, um, <laughs> no, but I, I listened to it beforehand and I'm based on the, the singles. Very, very excited for all these new upcoming albums yeah, we've been talking uh, about. Hopefully none of the times can sneak in some Delane as well. But that's another <laughs> thing. Really uh, quick listeners, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to hear first the song that Emo said was number one. Mm -hmm. We're from Mars. 
by the by talk. And then number two, we're gonna hear the song from the person who's gonna be on Tunes on Tuesday today, interviewed by Anthony Soto, running at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., both pre-recorded. So if you wanna listen into those things, stay tuned because here they come right now. <laughs>
Hello, listeners. Welcome back to 90.3 WMS Saber Montclair. My name's Aiden Ivers. We are back on the morning buzz for hour two, what is known as Chaos Hour. Oh, boy. Oh, man. I'm joined by... <laughs> <laughs> we are joined by me, Aiden Ivers, co-host Jake Getz. Hey there. Sportscaster George Calasia. What's going on? Segment host Emily McCormack. Hi. And newscaster Julia Slevin. Hi. Did I say it right? I think you did. Julia yeah. Slevin. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Julia, since we're an hour two, can you please give us what's good with the news? Absolutely. An hour two. Absolutely. An hour two. All righty. Our tough story. As of January 30th, the Memphis Fire Department has now fired two EMTs and a lieutenant from the Tyree Nichols case. The department says that they violated numerous policies and protocol when they were called to the scene on January 7th after the attack. The Memphis police also confirmed that seven officers from the scene were relieved of duty, including five who have been charged with the death of the young 29-year-old. Protesters are taking the streets to demand justice for this absolutely tragic loss. Our national story, Cindy Williams, a famous actress, dies at 75 years old. William was, Williams was known for her performance as Shirley in the popular sitcom Laverne and Shirley, as well as her performance in notable films such as American, American Graffiti and The Conversation. Her family says that she passed peacefully after an illness in Los Angeles, California. Our international story, a suicide bomber detonated explosives inside a mosque in northwestern Pakistan on Monday, killing and wounding dozens of worshipers. More than 150 people were praying when the suicide bomber struck. At least 59 people were killed and more than 157 were injured. And among those 157, 33 police officers. Our local New Jersey news. A skull found in Pennsylvania is identified as a missing New Jersey man from 1984. Richard Thomas Alt was 31 and last seen on Christmas Day when him and his girlfriend went missing. Her body was discovered, but he would be missing for years to come. A fisherman found a human skull on, on the Delaware River in Trenton, New Jersey, and through DNA testing and the help of his daughter, they discovered the skull is actually belonged to Mr. Alt. Hopefully, with advances in science and technology, researchers can crack these cold cases and give these family closure. Now, moving on to some weather. Today is going to be a high of 44 and a low of 22. Oh, my God. My phone is going off. I'm so sorry. It's all good. It's my mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> sorry, mom. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Back to weather. Today is going to be a high of 44 and a low of 22 with some sunshine during the afternoon. And later at night, the temperature will drop. So please remember your jacket. And tomorrow and the next few days are supposed to be partly sunny. Oh, my God. My mom and dad will not stop. I'm sorry. Um, for the next few days, are supposed to be partly sunny with some clouds. And during the week, it'll get a little bit cooler with some intervals. With So this year... January might end on a chillier note. This was the warmest one it's been. So I'm Julia Slevin and back to you, Aiden. Thank you, Julia. That does not sound fun. Chilly. That does not sound fun. Oh my gosh. I heard, I saw something uh, from Spectrum News on my phone yesterday. It said, yeah, there's going to be like a major like glacial push towards Northeast with like really cold, really cold air. Wow. Oh Oh, no. It's not. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> it's kind of relieving just because like there's been some nice like warmer days, yeah. and it, like it's it's a mixed like feeling because it's <laughs> nice. You're like, dang, it's like spring. I'm vibing. I don't have to wear that much coats. You're also like, wow, the planet is melting. <laughs> um, well, I think we will cross that bridge of warmer weather when we come to it, Jake. George, <laughs> yeah, called every time we come to it. Um, can you please tell us what's going on in the world of sports? Of course, I can, Aiden. All right, NFL. The big game is finally here as the Philadelphia Eagles and Kansas City Chiefs will face off on Sunday, February twelfth, in Arizona, with the championship on the line. And NFL news: the Los Angeles Chargers have hired former Cowboys offensive coordinator Kellen Moore to be their next offensive coordinator. In NBA, the Brooklyn Nets defeated the Los Angeles Lakers 121 to 104. The Nets improved 31 and 19 on the season, while the Lakers fall to 23 and 28. In NHL news, Chicago Blackhawks legend Bobby Hall passed away at the age of 82. The Hall of Famer spent 15 seasons with the Blackhawks and won two league MVPs. 
Rest in peace to Bobby Hall. In more NHL news, the New York Islanders have acquired Bo Horvat from the Vancouver Canucks. The Islanders are giving up multiple players and a conditional first-round pick for Horvat. This has been George Calcia with your WMSC Sportscast. Thank you very much, George. Of course, Aiden. Happy to bring you the what's going on in the world of yeah, sports. Yeah. Every Tuesday. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. And listeners, now we're going to move into a segment that we call Am I in the Wrong? I love this segment. We're going to pull some seg- some some uh, posts from the wonderful website known as Reddit. And we're gonna we're gonna dissect, we're gonna describe, we're gonna see, try to put into perspective if these people are in the wrong. But just a little disclaimer that the stuff that we're about to read is not our own personal experiences. We just found this stuff off of the internet and we're gonna try to make some sense of it. So Jake, why don't you read us the first story for Am I in the Wrong? Yeah. Am I in the wrong for saying to my friend in private? That she would have done better without her co-singer. Singer. Mm. Okay. Do we think that this is going to be in the wrong? She would have done better without her co-singer. I've read this already. <laughs> you know, I'm prepared. Um, so I'm not going to answer. But I mean, uh, what do I you know. guys think based off the headline? Mm. I'm, I'm not a musical student myself. So uh, it's... It, Reading off of that, reading that title may it's it may come off with some kind of jealousy, maybe, Ooh. maybe. Okay, but we'll see. I f- All right, let's. Oh. I What's feel that? like not in the wrong, mm. but I'm waiting to be proven wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Proceed. I'm a curious. Mm. All right, so this one reads: I'm in college studying music and theater in the UK. A local radio station offered a chance for two students to perform a song together. The college selected a student from their first year and final year. Um, the girl in her final year, 22, is one of my friends, while the girl in her first year is this American girl who spent 12 years in the U.S. before her family moved here, uh, and she's 18. I have no idea why she was chosen Her voice has no strength. She puts it through her nose and her accent doesn't fit well with my friends. There's a lot of other girls in the first year who should have been chosen. I think she's in, I think she's okay. But in my opinion, she was slash is probably spoiled by her mom. That's a mom with a U. (laughs) (laughs) Um, They perform the song in the the... (laughs) office. Just kidding. (laughs) Right? Uh, the British in <laughs> chat, <laughs> just so you're aware. Um, they performed the song in, in the auditorium, which the radio station recorded, and she really dragged my friend down in it. My friend nailed a ton of notes, and the audience clapped almost exclusively for her bits. Afterwards, the girl was extremely full of herself and getting all the attention. I spoke to my friend about what I thought was private, and I gave my opinion. I told her it would have been much better if she performed it alone. She said she didn't she didn't say that she agreed, but gave the look that she did. Turned out the girl was eavesdropping and confronted me, asking what I was saying about her. And I replied none of her business, but she kept probing me and wouldn't leave us alone until I just bluntly told her that I thought she was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> the next day I got an email from the college that I've been reported and they want to speak to me about bullying. I'm guessing she told her mother who made the report. <laughs> My friend might might have as well, and that's yeah. Oh no! That's it. What a what a turn! <laughs> oh no! What a, what a turn of events towards the end of that story, right? Oh, Eavesdropping! No. Wow, that sounds like something <laughs> out of a nickel like a sitcom, like on, on TV. This is like, kind of fun. So, <laughs> like you hear that sound effect, you know the sound effect where she was not afraid to tell it, tell her <laughs> what was on her mind. Listen, I'm gonna tell you that you're straight up garbage. Well, she didn't. She was prompted. She wasn't going to. <laughs> she literally. She was literally forced to. Like, yeah. And um, this person asked for it. They were like, "Tell me what you think." Yeah. Um, when well, they had and every reason to, to be- like kind of get the sense that like this person doesn't like you. I don't know. <laughs> to be fair, like you're, you said you've done theater before, right? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that can be a really 
competitive scene, right? Yeah, it's it's really dramatic. <laughs> like, yeah. um, so I feel like it's also sensitive. Like when you take like your performance and someone kind of talks badly about it, I think mm-hmm. it gets really sensitive. But this totally. story sounds a little catty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just thinking about. <laughs> We don't really know the degree of like how how many how many people does this tune into this radio station? How far does this broadcast? How, how far does bandwidth? We don't know that. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious as to how how much of a big stage that it is compared to like, you know, middle school thing. It really makes a difference. <laughs> right. Because yeah. if it's like a more high end, more competitive scene, then. Yeah, there's obviously going to be some more people who are better than others. But if it's, I mean, I mean, it's not, it's not a middle school scene. It's a college radio scene. But yeah. it's like, it, I think it depends on whether or not, um, again, how competitive it is. If it's just like a, if it's just like mm-hmm. a student gathering, student event. But I mean, to tell somebody that they're garbage to the face, <laughs> that yeah, it's a little take, extreme. Yeah, not. I mean, I, I I certainly would not be willing to do that. <laughs> I don't clear, think like, though, ever do it's... that. But I I also understand like you know it sounds like she just kept prying <laughs> after she was like like listening Let to me... someone else's conversation. Just like please, I need to know what you're saying. It's like okay, okay. you want to know what I'm I said? Sorry. This is what I said. You're, you're garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, right? Like. Insane. that's like why like <laughs> eavesdropping is so like a it, it's such a wild thing to do because it's like you're not it's not being said to you your feelings are not being accounted for mm. so like mm-hmm. if you're you're gonna pry that out don't be surprised when it's something that you wouldn't want to see it's not meant for you what, what did she um, think after like not telling her it was gonna be like good like yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, this is a big secret. I think you're really good. Like, wait, what? <laughs> no, you knew it was going to be bad if they didn't say it. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, in that sense, that doesn't seem well. Like, I can imagine somebody who's really uh, the show off kind in that sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They would be have that mindset when somebody says, oh, yeah, no, I think, you're, I think, I, I don't think you were very good. <laughs> <laughs> and to be clear, it's like, it's very clearly like about the art right like it's not like there seems to be any actual like it seems like they don't like this person Uh, i mean but it doesn't seem to be about that right like she does say like her voice has no strength it goes through her nose Mm. and there's an accent incongruity like those are pretty legitimate critiques yeah right yeah um okay so i think so so we say this person's not in the wrong or in the wrong i say not in the wrong not in the wrong like, uh, this is this is a tough one for me. <laughs> really? You are talking about somebody behind their back. But it was you know? like, okay, yeah. okay. But it's also this like a low key. Something I have a heart. I have a pretty hot take about. Like, I always get confused when people are like, "You are talking about me behind my back." Yeah. <laughs> like your back was turned. When did that become a bad thing? <laughs> like. I guess spreading rumors is one thing, and I guess that that's really yeah, that's, bad. That's, but yeah. like sharing your thoughts about the world around you, which includes the people in it, is like a part of being human. Mm. So like I don't know the idea that you're not allowed to, like I don't know, you have to make everyone in your world anonymous when you speak about it with anyone who isn't them. No, I don't know. It's... That's just weird to me. Definitely, mm. I definitely get that. I understand that. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that they're uh, I don't have an answer really. It also made the the comment in confidence that like no one was gonna hear it. It wasn't right. intentional, like, oh, yeah. I want this person to know I don't like them. Okay. Yo, Just to my close friends, like I don't think this really worked. And then it d- ended up worse. I'm gonna go not in the wrong man. Okay. No, I don't know. I feel oh, like no. there's a line, like I think the whole I told her I thought she was garbage. Mm-hmm. You could have phrased that any other way. You could have been like, I was just saying, I think that you could have done better or like the performance wasn't mm-hmm. what I expected or something like any other way. I think the, I told her I thought she was garbage. It was like that, <laughs> that hits a little hard that and that lot, hits yeah. just, yeah. you know, that's borderline bullying. Yeah. So, so I'm like, so I don't know. 
like, thin line here. <laughs> if I was on the other side of this and I was told it was garbage, I'd be really upset. Mm. But I also don't know if I would go to any like higher person and be like, oh, I need like a bullying case. It's like, I know I pried yeah. that out of someone. Yeah. If I wanted to hear what they really thought, then I pried it out of them and I did and I'm garbage. <laughs> and it, yeah, right. It's not like it was being at, like the request was like, hey, like if you think that like, like for critique, right? That wasn't really what was going no. on. It was more like, no. what are you saying about me? And yeah. Like, so okay, do we all, so saying. could we all collectively agree that friends not in the wrong? Uh, I'm going okay. to. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree. I'll go. I'll go. I would, I would, not in the I would say. I would say so. Lara, <laughs> what is the verdict? <laughs> in the wrong. Really, Reddit said they're in the wrong. Whoa! I, I said in the wrong earlier. I okay. You're allowed to. You're allowed to disagree. <laughs> yeah. No. It doesn't okay. have to be homogenous. I should. I should have kept my with my gut feeling. <laughs> my yeah. gut feeling was in the wrong, but I was like, you know what? First time on here, oh. better not mess it up. <laughs> if everyone's saying not in the wrong, I'm gonna I'll go with that. Just go for it. No. <laughs> Huh. Wait, I mean, I want to hear like Reddit's like I don't know. I'd like to nation. <laughs> what do they have to say for themselves? I mean, I, do I, we I, know? I, I don't I'm know. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure <laughs> not many people on Reddit socialize. So yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's so true. I mean, I what could understand. Is grow compassion. It's not the Reddit I know. No wrong. So does that does that Reddit give us the incentive to to? I guess what? not so not call not, people garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, maybe not hit them with that. That's not my go-to. Oh, no. but, but I don't think that this person is like perfect either. No, no definitely not. None of us are. They call people garbage, but I don't, I don't know. I still think that this person isn't in the wrong. It was okay. it was taken All out right. of them that comment. Well, let's get ready for submission number two. Ooh, and here we go. Here we go. Oh man, sticking with my gut feeling. Go Emma, for it. Emma, hold up, hold up, <laughs> hold up. Okay, am I in the wrong for complaining about after I asked to join my husband on his business trips? My husband and I hadn't been spending much time together, even though we'd only been married four months. So I asked him if I could join him on his business trip. It took some convincing because he thought I would be bored the whole time. But he eventually agreed. He was supposed to be in Berlin for a week, but it somehow turned into him going into five different countries in nine days? Oh my gosh, what kind of job does this guy have? I want to have that kind of job. It was awful. And I was severely jet lagged the entire time, so I didn't feel very good. I don't know how he and everybody else was going to was coping with the travel, but I told him I was I was I wanted to go home because I couldn't keep with his schedule. After a lot of arguing, he did eventually slow the pace down and we went home earlier than he would have liked, even though I told him I could go home by myself. During the argument, he said I shouldn't complain. Because I was I, because I invited myself along along, and he was trying to get all of his work out of the way for me. He has to go on another trip in a few days, and he told me I couldn't go because of what happened last time, even though I wasn't planning to ask. <laughs> Dang! Oh my gosh! <laughs> what a mess! How, this, is, <laughs> this reminds me of the story we said last week when the yeah. uh, the girl yeah who yeah went this to is... Europe and. We're Man. noticing a trend. Yeah. But Travels. Like, yeah. If you're in a relationship, kind of... traveling is a <laughs> yeah. very touchy subject. Apparently. <laughs> what kind of job makes it so you go into one country and then five countries in nine days? Couldn't they get somebody else to go to those five countries? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't personally know like what kind of jobs there are, but I've had friends and they're like, oh, yeah, my dad's in this country and then this one and then he's just in this one. You know, yeah. so there are definitely businesses like that. Oh my gosh, but this I... Is, this is just, there's, it's still confusing, the story. Yeah. No, but I definitely, no, definitely, I definitely understand the yeah. perspective of of the husband and saying, this is not like a vacation. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a vacation. Trip. This is yeah. serious work. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to pick the country to do work. I'm not going there to, you know, have fun and yeah. see tourist attractions. Oh, I mean, you know, probably done on your off time when all the meetings and works are done for the day. Mm -hmm. But it, 
that's just yeah she didn't really talk too much or i'm assuming she i didn't really read this person did not really talk too much about the complaining though so that's why i'm i'm i don't know yeah. but like she, I'm, I'm having trouble figuring out like if, if they're asking if they're wrong for complaining to what extent did they complain <laughs> like i, I don't yeah, know well, i'm reading too far into I, it because she originally wanted to go she originally wanted to go on the trip yeah and didn't then know. it wasn't it wasn't expected to what she was yeah she wasn't expecting what happened <laughs> and I, I mean i don't know <laughs> okay so, yeah. i think that there's some red flags in this story yeah. i think that only being married for four months and you guys don't spend a lot of time together and are already kind of arguing it's where, like oh this where sounds they go like for the where'd they go for the honeymoon yeah like how did Five you guys survive countries? the honeymoon four months ago <laughs> like, I mean, I think it's also hard because they've only been married for four months, but mm -hmm. that must have been known going into it. Like, hey, this is my line of work. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be around for an extended period of time mm -hmm. most of the time. And I guess she's just like, oh, let me let me see how this goes. And I think if anything that this person to be like, wow, I don't know how you do that. That's yeah. crazy. And you can also it could also bring up the the idea of like, there's going to be other times to vacation. There's going to be other times to do this. And it's not now. Yeah. Like, this is a business <laughs> trip. This is not a yeah. vacation. So. Okay. So, can we all collectively, are we all the same? Are we in the same boat this time about this Reddit post? Yeah. Yeah. Do we, yeah. Do we say that this person is in the wrong? Definitely. Oh, man. Well. I mean, I can't blame them for trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I then think, once um, you find out it's not for you, just don't, just be done. Yeah. yeah. Move I on. believe that, um. I don't know if I remember correctly. I think there's a thing of like everything being bad here, <laughs> like because that's the thing. Like oh, I can't great. even like fully like identify blame. Like I feel yeah. like it's just like it's just bad, you know. Just the badness is imminent. That's right, Jake. And what <laughs> what else is it? What what else is imminent is the result of of what Reddit says about this post, which is person is in the wrong. Woo! Yeah, they are in the wrong. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Business trips are not for vacationing. Not. Oh my gosh. Like, I, I, and even if they were going to spend a lot of time together, he was going to be on his, you know, his business trip. She was going to be probably in the hotel room. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So that's really, really uh interesting. I respect her for trying though. That's, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's respect there. And then the now we're done. Draws. Respectfully, you're in the wrong. <laughs> in the most Don't travel with your significant other. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Don't, let, let's what? <laughs> what? It's in this situation, like, don't do that anymore. Please don't. Yeah. Well, it works out. <laughs> listeners, <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break here on the morning buzz. When we come back, we're gonna have some more softer stories for you. We're gonna talk about some less hard news, more nicer things to talk about. So stay tuned for all that.
Does that track sound nice? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Delicious. Yes. Absolutely gorgeous. Welcome <laughs> back, listeners, to the Morning Buzz. Here on 9.3 WMS Saper Montclair. My name is Aiden Ivers. We're joined by co-host Jay Getz. Good morning. Voice cast of George Kalasiak. So, segment host Emily McCormack. Hi. And newscaster Julius Slevin. Hi. <laughs> All right. Yes. Cool. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So perfect. Yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. And so can you please take us into our next story, which is yes, pretty, pretty very cool. first quirky, not like the other girl story. <laughs> um, death cab for cuties. Ben Gibbard said he's too old to do what? <laughs> Benjamin Hold Gibbard up. catches up with Kyle Meredith to talk about death cab for cuties tenth album, Asphalt Meadows. The frontman talks about making the record in an assembly line fashion, the anxiety attacks that play throughout the lyrics, and taking stock of his past. Gibbard also talks about channeling Slint on one of his one of the tracks and working with Noah Cyrus on her latest album. They're also working on the upcoming reunion of the Postal Service that will celebrate their 20, 2003 album, as well as Death Cab's transatlanticism. In the interview, Ben Gibbard said, quote, I'm too old to write songs about cops stealing my skateboard. I'm if only Blink would could take note. Too old you know? to write songs about cops stealing my skateboard. I think that Blink-182 should listen to this <laughs> story. I 100% agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I actually do think that, like, you know, it's funny, but it's also a pretty genuine critique of, like, the direction that like punk music mm. is going like i feel like there's no like because a lot of these punk bands are like getting a lot older yeah I'm... and um and especially like with you know these kind of like you know these are not like i guess this, this might sound like sort of like snobby to say <laughs> like these are not like like blink 182 right like these are not like that's not like grassroots punk that's you know mm. very corporate very like big yeah. Uh, which is not to say that they're not good i love the band but like mm. i don't know there's just i don't know there's no sense of like maturing going yeah. into anything like mm. i don't know i don't i don't i i do have some songs saved from blink 182 but i don't follow them in depth who is ben gibbard like is he a member of blink 182 no this is death cap for cutie yeah we're talking um, about blink 182 so we're just we relating just, we to call them out the 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 last quote that uh that Gibbard said about like writing about songs uh, cop stealing my skateboard yeah. uh Blink 182 has a a recent single where in my opinion it very much sounds like Blink 182 trying to sound like Blink 182 yeah. and um so I honestly really respect Death Cab for Cutie for being like okay we're we're growing up we're we're moving on and um I know some people. We're also complaining, like not to to bring him up, uh, but Panic at the Disco in the the recent album Viva Las Vengeance, where it's like it sounds like some people say his voice sounds strained, and exactly, some say yeah. he just sounds like he's getting older. I feel like Brendan Urie is one of those people who just straight up wouldn't accept it, and maybe that has something to do with the fact that Panic at the Disco is no more as of a week ago today. Was yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. I I don't know. I respect Death Cab for Cutie for being like you know we're moving on and you know still still making music though like not giving up and the fact that the postal service is coming back that sounds really i don't know if anyone else knows of uh, the postal service they have a, a song called such great heights that uh plays on rotation on a lot of alternative stations the only song that i know by them but it's it's outstanding and asphalt meadows you know they have a couple songs that have been really <laughs> doing really great on the alternative charts so obviously they're doing something right you know no oh, that's really interesting you know i i uh I'm not so in tune with the punk scene, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really, really interesting. Wow. Yeah, I, I hope uh, Blink takes a, a, a little, <laughs> like takes a, takes note, uh, for whatever they have in store for us next. And in that same category is Fall Out Boy, right? Or no? Vaguely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of Fall Out Boy fans do listen to Blink One Eighty Two. You know, there's a lot of overlap in the fans, but you know, you have Blink, which is so like more towards i guess you could say punk whereas like fall out boy is more rock and the death cap for cutie is like indie alternative um oh but they're they're well 
I'll be playing them after the buzz <laughs> too. <laughs> We're talking about all my favorite bands today. Hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, to step outside of the world of music into the world of movies and entertainment, we have some new things coming out on Netflix. If uh, that sounds interesting <laughs> to you, and so tomorrow is February first. Can you guys believe that already? Oh wait, wait, wait. wow! February, February first, first. It's crazy. The and month of love. With that with with a new month, with a new month comes <laughs> new releases on Netflix. So <laughs> the first thing we have coming out is "Call Me by Your Name," and reading that title brings me back to Little Nas X's song. That's that related to him? Yeah. yeah, is that related to? Him? Definitely. Yeah, no, that's what the song was um named after this movie. Oh, so. Or I don't know if it was the movie or the book because it was a book first. But yeah, it's based off of this story. Okay, cool. Okay, we have Flushed Away. We have a cartoon. It. Right? I, I, don't I don't know. We have yeah. It. We have La La Land, the 32nd season of Survivor, <laughs> <laughs> and oh. the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm. And. <laughs> uh, along along with those things you season four will be released on february 9th same day as rebecca black album comes out <laughs> and on february 23rd season three of outer banks will be out the only notable films leaving next month are all three spider-man movies no and the adams family from 1991 i'm so glad i got oh. to see the spider-man movies on netflix before they got taken off, you know. Speed run. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I might have to do that later. <laughs> yeah, just binge watch all three. They're so good. Mm. I tell you, I, I, the only reason why I turn on Netflix really is to watch the the bigger series, just like Stranger Things. Mm. That's the last, like the the last time I turn on Netflix, like unless it was for like educational purposes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't like these sound cool and all I mean, i'm really interested about Call of Duty. I, I thought oh, I, I love that movie. i thought it was it's already on netflix well, I, I, it's not I, it's oh. not <laughs> but it will be because i remember watching it a few months ago <laughs> that's why maybe it did one of those maybe. like it's on there and then leaves and then, like, yeah you know, that happens a lot can't decide no i don't no, think I don't. no you're good i haven't watched something in a minute it's my only comment okay well Speaking about <laughs> internet celebrities, kind of from uh, from popularity, Jake, why don't you tell us about what's going on in the world of public relations and popularity? Oh God, do I have to? Um, <laughs> okay, so get this. Um, there's this. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to begin this. So um, there is this candy that you might have heard of called m&ms mm -hmm. and um it, we're getting reports that they're m&ms but I, i'm sorry to tell you that the m and spokes candies change was actually a stunt for the big game if you have a crush on the green m&m you're in luck she's back yeah um, <laughs> if you have a crush what <laughs> Hey, people do don't <laughs> on an M and M. Shame. There has been lots of discourse about this. All if, right, in all case right. you were um on it um blissfully unaware. <laughs> um, okay. Um, M and M's parent company Mars Wrigley announced that it would be pulling its M and M's spokes candies mascots indefinitely and replacing them with the actor Maya Rudolph. However, the P the company told the New York Times that the controversial move was all just a PR stunt. And that the spokes candies will indeed return at the upcoming big game. Uh, Mars Wrigley said in a statement to the New York Times, quote, rest assured, the characters are our official long term spokes candies. Uh, end quote. <laughs> the for the mascots work. are taking a break from the, the mascots are taking a break for the time being. The MM's um, big game ad will resolve the situation and bring back the spokes candies. Spokes I have to say, yeah, yeah, they insisted on using that, and I, I just won't comment on it. Um, 
way to spoil the surprise <laughs> like right like way to like completely give away <laughs> way to just completely <laughs> abandon the bit as soon as it gets a little spicy yeah. come on i don't know Admit. pretty cowardly move i was I had my tv on last night in my dorm and i saw commercials featuring what you just said jake featuring commercials the green m&m like, no, 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 no. With, okay. with the actor Ryan, Maya Rudolph. Maya Rudolph. Oh, oh, really? And okay. <laughs> That's interesting. It's a really, I mean, they have the, the M&M's for the time being changed their name as well. They're not M&M's. Okay. Yeah. They're what are Ma, they? They're Ma, okay, so Ma, Manya. That's the name. It's M-A-N-Y-A, apostrophe S. Manya, <laughs> Manya, Manya. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Maya Rudolph, I, yeah. Oh, Maya, like, it's for Maya Rudolph. I see what you and mean, instead, though. Instead of little the little M, you can either get M and M with Ma, <laughs> or M and M with Ya, or apostrophe S. Yes. That is so funny. Oh, yeah, like, I guess. <laughs> Ma, yeah, Ma, yeah. I guess. Uh, that is, yeah. does not sound like a spokes candy. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it's the one. It's one person. It's a human being. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, acceptable. Oh my yeah, nothing about this is acceptable. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's just um, interesting you know, story. It's cool that someone that that some corporation has found a way to benefit off of the um <laughs> just absolutely brain melting talking points that um conservative media can just pump out because I I don't know. It's it, it it's very funny. That's that's yeah. the silver lining. That's the <laughs> that's the positive spin. Yeah, I mean, this, this stuff in the right. Like, uh, if we to, if we pay any mind to what's going on in the like, in the world of political <laughs> media, uh, this is def this is definitely been in the news recently because I guess people like don't like the fact that Eminem's have their own personalities i guess like, i think I, some people are concerned they don't have enough personality <laughs> god oh my god like, that's, that's oh my that's, god that's <laughs> no that's actually like what the problem was that's where it came from mm. wait what do you mean by that <laughs> like, i'm kind of i'm just curious like there were okay so from my understanding this is not a story i followed closely yeah. Yeah. but um you just can't avoid it yeah you know i believe tucker carlson um <laughs> you know a man who unfortunately i don't think needs much of an introduction did a segment on m&ms on, on these you know these characters these um these spokes candies yeah and um i guess you know complained that they just weren't alluring enough um that's they, ridiculous like, I mean, they just, they just... yeah no and <laughs> this is the, the real world and yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Wow. Hey, well, good news is that they're going to be back. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> be back. Gonna be back. So uh, we can look forward to that. And to move, on to, to move into our next story, according to Kansas.com, man on fire in Walmart bathroom is extinguished by firefighters. Florida man? Don't know him. <laughs> it's all about Kansas, man, now. Kansas, man. Firefighters in Kansas respire, responded to reports of a fire at Walmart and found a man on fire, officials said. The, the Topeka Fire Department received a call about a bathroom fire at Walmart neighborhood market in Topeka just after 8 p.m. Officials say firefighters arrived and found a man on fire in the bathroom. The firefighters extinguished the blaze. The PECA officials said the man was taken to a hospital with serious injuries. No other injuries have been reported. Officials are still investigating the cause of the fire and did not release the man's name. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, definitely sounds like something we would hear happening in Sunshine State, but that's not the case here. <laughs> Maybe they'll take note. Uh, please don't. Not, please don't. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> This is, I mean, we we don't really have a lot of details here, other than yes, the the uh, firefighters put him out, like the <laughs> fire. I mean, the fire on him, not put the man out, but 
Um, I'm curious, <laughs> how, I'm curious to know how the fire started in the bathrooms. Yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, I mean, on social media, especially with the, I think the app Vine when it was really popular, that was a trend. People lighting their arms on fire, and just like mm. for like the six seconds that you had, like, like, and then like, 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 like put it out really fast, like. You couldn't think of a better idea for a vine other yeah. than <laughs> you know, lighting yourself on fire. Like that's uh, we, again, we don't know. This is speculation. It could be we could be related to doing. I mean, we don't know that the age of the man. It doesn't doesn't say. Um, we don't know uh, why he did it or was it so was it a trend? Did he have serious mental issues? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. So don't know. many questions. I think yeah, but the, I think the what we can take out of this way that's good is that the man's alive still he didn't like unfortunately uh nothing nothing went above above the limit of physical harm you know so um hopefully this man i think heals as fast as possible even and hopefully he learns from his lesson too mm-hmm. you, you really if you don't if in, the, in your best interest you really shouldn't light yourself on fire like that <laughs> <laughs> i think that's a, an understandable recommendation yeah. be frankenstein fire bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay. Well, speaking about internet happenings, internet trends, Jake, can you tell us a little bit about this, the website BuzzFeed with their next story? Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Jake, we can't hear him. Oh, Jake, no. Stop talking. We can't hear you. Oh, gosh. No, I'm good. BuzzFeed used to, um, you, to use AI to write its articles after firing 100... 80 employees after dozens of employees were laid off online publisher buzzfeed known for its pop culture articles quizzes and listicles mm. announced that it would start using artificial intelligence to write its content open ai the creator of chat gpt will be employed for the initiative and will create custom made quizzes according to a memo to staff from ceo jonah Peretti, he intends to increase AI across BuzzFeed's editorial output in business operations this year. Peretti relayed his expectations of AI to improve creativity and content, but humans would still have their role in providing cultural currency and inspired prompts. He set a timeline of 15 years for AI to, quote, create, personalize, and animate the content itself. Um, okay, so I understand... I, I kind of understand what the uh, last second like last line that you read, Jake, about how humans would still have their role with the work that mm-hmm. robots would be writing for their articles. But in the big picture, I think you could say that this is a big slap in the face in journalism, I think, right? Because the whole point of sitting down writing an article, I, I don't know how, like, on what degree BuzzFeed is like journalism, like, compared to like New York Times or something like that. But you know, there was a point where BuzzFeed, I think, was really trying to break into, like, hard journalism, and mm. it's pretty wild to see, um, That's, you know, yeah, what was, I mean, you know, at least at some point, like, a pretty significant force in that field of and, fully embracing AI, like, yeah, in, in such a really radical cool. way, and in such a way with a pretty blatant disregard for, like, I don't know, human laborers. I mean, this past Friday on Moncler Newsroom, Hannah Cox and I covered a story where I forget the college that this person went to where they're from but a person created a software that detects when basically an artificial intelligence when a robot Mm -hmm. does an essay it detects that yeah so what is like the what what, in, in what sense is this like moving forward because uh, why are people creating softwares to stop AIs from writing real people's things? You know, mm-hmm. that's 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 something I'm curious about. Because that's like, like, you know what I mean? Like, why are they employing like, this strategy? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, if... well, because it's less labor, right? Like, any humans mm-hmm. doing things is work that needs to be paid for. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when you get a machine to do it, like, right, like, this is the idea behind all, like, industrial production that, mm. you know, when you get machines to do work for you, um, you know, you, you don't have to pay as much. <laughs> but um, I just, I'm just curious about how reliable that 
robots would be in, the, in informing us about pop culture, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's that, that's the big thing. Uh, they might just like turn it so okay. So in uh in they might just turn all the articles and just talking about how great robots are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like suspiciously, like <laughs> get you to think everything's mm. fine. Yeah. Not bridge by like, robot. Like, grind all your gears. Cybertron 3000 <laughs> is looking especially pretty today. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's definitely interesting. Julie, I, I, do, you, do you have anything to something to add to the story? Um, I actually heard in my in my one of my classes, we were talking about how BuzzFeed is like one of the most toxic companies to work for, actually, in journalism, that they're like really not good to their like employees and this case kind of like proves it like firing yeah. 180 employees yeah. so also I think that their goal is to just kind of massly produce media and it doesn't matter like the unique originality of it they just want people to like look at links and look at other things yeah. and like check out their sites so they'd rather have robots do it than mm-hmm. actual people behind it with like real that stories is- I feel like they just want to put stuff out there just like mass produce a lot of media so it's not really and if yeah that's totally correct and like i think um if you even like look at what their content has been has always been right Mm -hmm. like it's always kind of had a bit of a robotic quality like i don't know if you've ever taken one of those those quizzes (laughs) um but if you've taken one you've basically taken all of them Mm. um wow i actually felt like they like declined a lot like back when like 2014 mm-hmm. 2015 mm-hmm. I felt like that was their like peak era no they like had I thought that they, they, they had really a moment did. like I was always being like what type of bread am I like I don't know like, <laughs> I don't know that was like their peak and then now I'm like whenever I see BuzzFeed it's like it just spams my computer or my phone with like different links and I'm like I yeah. do not have time for this and I'm pretty sure as well um on the app Snapchat as well mm-hmm. under the news section quote unquote BuzzFeed is where you you could find a bunch of stories related to BuzzFeed, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because that's the type of news we're talking about here. <laughs> the news you find on Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah, it makes you think though. Like, if they're reporting news, like how how is there any credibility with a robot? Like, yeah. I was excuse gonna me, ask. can you cite your sources? Like, where did you get that from? <laughs> like, I was gonna ask too. Like, don't you sign? Like, if you write an article, don't you sign it? Like, written by so and so. Yeah, and then like, what what are they gonna are they gonna like name all the the robots was, and then you look up the name and it's like oh yeah it's a robot like oh can I you knew sue it. them like yeah, can you sue the think, robot model four not model three model four. four four yeah another kind of interesting like aspect of this is i know um i don't really know the mechanics of uh-huh. of text generation bots that well yeah but i know that with image generator ai mm. um you know how it works is they have a bit of like they have reference images as a sort of lexicon that they take in and that's kind of creates a pretty big issue with regards Mm -hmm. to like copyright and um and credit because if Mm. you know if the machine is making an image based off the work of a living artist um like right like that creates a problem like you're like that could be plagiarism Mm -hmm. Um, that goes back to someone just like just said like how do we sue the robot like because that that means like they the robot could be taking then samples from actual people who have written stuff Mm -hmm. plagiarizing them and then what do you do from there i guess all you could really do is take it up with the company like in Mm -hmm. this case you you take it up with buzzfeed but i don't really know how that's going to work but i see that definitely being something that will happen it's realistic to happen yeah and meanwhile if you try to fight the robots maybe don't look in your bank account after you post it. Think about saying how robots are bad. That might go bye bye. Well, <laughs> that yeah. might go bye bye. For robot reasons, y'all y'all are fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, friend, to move on to our next story, according to NPR.org, the makers of Fireball Whiskey. Okay, I'm gonna have a really bad time pronouncing this. Saz- Sazerac. Sazerac. Thank you, Joe. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Sazerac <laughs> Company Incorporated are being sued by their customers for fraud and misrepresentation. The many bottles of the alcoholic beverage don't actually contain whiskey. What? <laughs> the smaller bottles named Fireball Cinnamon are made from a blend of malt beverage and wine, while the whiskey-based products are called Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey. 
Upon closer inspection, the product description read, quote, a malt beverage with natural, natural whiskey and other flavors and caramel color. This insinuates whiskey is an ingredient used in the drink when it actually uses whiskey flavor. The complaint says, quote, what the label means to say is that the product contains natural whiskey flavors and other flavors. But by not including the word flavors after natural whiskey, purchasers who look closely will expect the distilled spirit of whiskey was added as a separate ingredient. Wait, that's so funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. Everything I know is a lie. Technically, it does say that. I didn't trust anything anymore. Technically, mm. they didn't do anything wrong. Hmm. I was reading about the story, and the reason why is because the mini bottles of Fireball Cinnamon mm -hmm. and the big bottles of Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey, as they say, the labels are very, very identical. Mm. So when you mm. think you're getting the mini bottles, you think you're just getting a smaller version of the big one. But in that case, it's, you're really not. Mm. Why aren't you? I don't why, like, why didn't they? That would be an That's interesting weird. question to answer. Because like, I'm why sure, isn't like, it it's motivated for, from something? Yeah, why isn't it like the same thing? You know, but, I, um, I wonder if it's because they want to sell it for so cheap. Like um, right. malt liquor is like cheaper than like the actual whiskey mm -hmm. it would be to to make mm -hmm. it like that that's why i feel like they're only like 99 cents or a dollar 99 or something like that i can't stand mm -hmm. fireball yeah. so i don't i don't drink it but <laughs> i don't drink period so this is a, yeah eden <laughs> I don't know. this is just a yeah really, uh... <laughs> only monster in this household yeah <laughs> you know i'm joking only monster. we got water in the studio today <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i mean hopefully um this this gets the company who makes this product of alcohol back on track, you know, uh, because it's, it's not going to, from a business standpoint, where people are saying, what's the big idea with this product? I spent my <laughs> hard-earned money on this, <laughs> and it's not what I paid for, but hopefully uh, as it won't be the case moving forward <laughs> as, uh, you know, that business goes on. And Jake. Can you tell us a quick story before we depart about the San Antonio Zoo? Yes. <laughs> That's, yeah, no. San Antonio Zoo will let you name a cockroach after an ex and feed it to an animal. So, um, it's <laughs> that time of year again. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. If you're holding a bit of a grudge against a certain someone this year, you're in luck. The San Antonio Zoo is offering a special Valentine's Day greeting for exes who just won't bug off. The zoo will name a cockroach after your not-so-special someone and feed it to an animal, a cold but direct message that you're no longer inter interested. <laughs> the annual Cry Me a Cockroach fundraiser will support, quote, this will, quote, support the zoo's vision of securing a future for wildlife in Texas around the world, end quote. If bugs aren't for you, donors can choose a vegetable or a rodent <laughs> instead. Um, all donors will receive a digital Valentine's Day card showing their support for the zoo. You can also opt to send their expo a digital <laughs> Valentine's Day card informing them that a cockroach, rodent, or veggie was named after them and fed to an animal. I'm so... Um, that's so cruel. <laughs> so, I love that. Imagine <laughs> getting that, getting that, like, message. Like, yeah. this person named a cockroach after you <laughs> and fed it to a donkey. Wh like, which option do you um, think is worse? The cockroach, rodent, or veggie? I think the rodent's the worst. <laughs> the worst yeah, getting yeah, a I card feel like, like rodent would hit different i'd like... just be confused if someone said somebody named a carrot after you and fed it to a horse like okay that sounds <laughs> yeah. kind of nice you're honestly. actually yeah, right? supporting the horse you're actually doing a horse good by doing that yeah yeah <laughs> i think the rodent like they're like you can opt for the rodent instead i feel like that would that's the most gruesome option <laughs> like oh yeah you right can't opt from you like to... the bug to the rodent <laughs> logically do you get to pick which animal you feed it to um i won't see why not like why wouldn't you be able to right i mean i mean it gives people options here yeah, I mean, <laughs> maybe maybe it could be related to how their relationship with that person ended mm. they wanted to match like therapeutic wise maybe it's good that certain animal is fed to yeah kind of like if they're a snake yeah. just like 
Ooh. Oh, yeah. Like a, yeah. That'd be good if you can get like an actual snake. Yeah. Get into, like, I don't know. Wow. So I'm I'm curious though. Is there how how do you think a program would work from the opposite end of this if people are really happy with their Valentine's Day relationship? Like how how would that they wouldn't do this. It'd just be a pet store. <laughs> I don't know. You buy them the Maybe pet. on sale. Put pets on sale. Yeah. So yeah. If like, you're in love. If you're in love. <laughs> like a puppy. Purchase that. Puppy. I feel like people that are in love, like this holiday is for you, but like, let us have this. Like, let us have the cockroach, <laughs> like Listen, feeding. I'm in a happy relationship, but if I, hi, Lara, producer, but if <laughs> I have the opportunity to name a thing after my ex-boyfriend and i get to feed it to something you're gonna i'm go gonna do it, it but yeah. you know i was thinking i was thinking <laughs> am i gonna opt more for a veggie or a rat because i feel like rats like a low blow but i think i'm gonna go with the rat, rat. i what think i would go pick? rat i would totally go rat yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. veggie like is it playing it's... it safe it's too safe it's way a too safe case basis thing i think if they were a rat like i don't know you know then go for it mm. No, like, Aiden's not agreeing. I, I can't really I mean, say anything. I mean, <laughs> I mean, no, yeah. I mean, this is for exes who just don't bug off. So uh, maybe they're exes who are on good terms with them, though. You don't know. Like, I mean, then, yeah, then veggie's funny. Yeah, the veggie's then, funny. Then, give it to some care to a horse. You can give it to support carrot. another animal who can get nutrition off of it. You could spread love and food by paying for hatred. <laughs> what? And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so universal. <laughs> Everything connects. What, 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 oh, like another thing is called cry me a cockroach. <laughs> cry me a cockroach. Yeah, that's, really, that's really good marketing. Of it. Yeah. Like marketing. <laughs> I like the digital Valentine's Day card. Yeah, like I would, like, I would I would save that forever if someone did that. <laughs> Just looking at your phone. Have, yeah, if they, they have their number, support to the zoo. Yeah. If they have their number, we are happy block. that you named this cockroach Jeffy. Yeah. It just, <laughs> it just automatically shrunk up on its own mouth, just regardless of how it is. But, anyways, listeners, this is the end of the Tuesday morning buzz here on 98.3 WMSC of Vermont Claire. If you're interested, you can tune in tomorrow, same time, same place, with a different crew. As people on the morning buzz tomorrow are going to be interviewing the president of the Punks at 20, Groundhog Club president, and all things about Groundhog Day. That's going to feature host Gabby Lutz and co-host Terry Dickerson, along with other people. So if you're interested, tune in for that and enjoy your rest of your Tuesday. Thank you so much, Julia. Great, great debut job. Oh, thank you. Incredible stuff. Thank you. Emily McCormack, Jake Kalasiak, and Jake Getz, Lara Zaccardi. Thank you for joining me, Aiden Ivers, and here is Yet the Bloom with People Pleaser. We're in the midst 